the youngest came back with zero still, and that's only a six month span of time between when she last tested for zero. However, my oldest came back with one autoantibody present. I was in a bad mood for the rest of the day. There's no lying. Uh, I suddenly was struck with like, oh my gosh, it could be real. I could have a child that has type one and is gonna have to deal with all of the same immense burden that I have to deal with every single day. Then I took a deep breath and started doing some research because one autoantibody does not mean that she's necessarily in the early stages of developing type 1 diabetes. It could actually mean a few things. If you have two autoantibodies present, the chances of developing type 1 diabetes in the next 10 years and becoming insulin dependent is about 70%. If you have two autoantibodies present, the chances of developing type 1 diabetes and becoming insulin dependent in the next 15 years is about 100%. So I was hoping that the answer would be that you either have two at the same time or you don't. And since, oh, my child just has one, hopefully that means it's no big deal and it's, it still means that she's never going to develop type 1. Unfortunately, that's not the case. She has a 14% risk of developing type 1 diabetes because she has one autoantibody present and fortunately she's after the age of three. If you develop one autoantibody before the age of three, your risk of developing type 1 diabetes is much higher. My daughter went from zero to one. What's to stop her from going from one to two? And that's what I have to accept now in the back of my head is that she could develop type 1 diabetes. I'm just going to keep testing her every six months. Fortunately, she thinks the test is pretty cool. And it could very well go from one to zero. She had a very major kidney bladder surgery a few months ago. And the stress of that could have triggered a little bit of autoimmunity, as one of JDRF's top researchers explained to me. And that could go away. If, let's say, she comes back with just one for year after year after year, and eventually there are two, that's when I know I can immediately enroll her in one of the many trials that are looking at things like tepuzumab. Tepuzumab works by delaying the full onset of type 1 diabetes. The average delay is about three years. That's a big deal. Is it a lifetime? No. And for some people it could be longer, right? This is also really early research. By the time one of my children might need something that could delay, there could be something that delays it by 10 years. So measuring and testing autoantibodies in your kids is so easy and such a no-brainer. As someone with two young children, I I I'll do anything I can to delay or hopefully someday prevent them needing to take insulin all day in order to stay alive.